Hello, my name is Jason, and I'm a remote student at Code Platoon and just completed weeks one of 14. Before getting started in this course, uh, an area that I was really worried about was, was I going to get the same uh, education as those that were in person? And my first impression for this week is that uh, remote equals same education. And why do I say that? Well, because uh, those that are in class, they're also logged into Zoom. So everything that they're hearing, you are seeing, you're hearing and seeing at the same time they are. Uh, if you have a question as a remote student, you just raise your hand, you interact with the instructor, um, and you can also type in the chat. And, you know, one of the instructors um, uh, will respond to you. In, in that, or they'll actually stop what they're doing to kind of just go over that question and break it down. And uh, just so, because not not just you will have those, those questions, um, a lot of the individuals in the class that aren't asking the question are gonna get something from that. So um, there's a lot of questions um, um, on Slack, which is another, uh, uh, area that we cover, and I'll talk about that more a little bit later on. Uh, but uh, in short, if you're if you're worried about being a remote student, um, I wouldn't say that's that would that would be your biggest worry, uh, because you are going to get the same education as those that are live in person. Um, and uh, you know, another area that I wanted to talk about before going over the you know the topics that we covered this week is that the TAs, the teachers assistant. They're great. They're very knowledgeable, and they're with the willing to help during class and available after class on Slack. Uh, for those of you that don't know what Slack is, it's a communication platform that we use in Code Platoon. Many other companies use this platform, and I personally think it's great. Um, it's where we can go on, share ideas, share code, ask questions, interact with other students um, after and during class. Um, if we're having questions. Another thing that's great about it is, is that you can go live just like you could um, on Zoom. So if you have a question and, and maybe you want to get one of those, those after hours TAs to help you out, you can do a live video with them, share your screen and kind of just go over what you've been working on or what you have issues with. So at the end of the day, um, it's, it's going to be great. Being a remote student, one of the advantages that I think that I do have is that I have my own setup. I'm in my house. I have two screens. I have um, my my microphone, my my camera. Um, I have my my own refrigerator. So if I if I want to get up and get a drink at any time, you know, I don't have to go to the vending machine or I don't have to tote in a bunch of stuff to uh, to to set me up for the day. Um, I can walk out and, you know, during lunch and just go straight to my kitchen and 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 make lunch. Um, so that is, I think, one advantage that a remote student has over one that's in person. You know, I, I wake up and I walk over um, to my room after I've ate breakfast and gotten ready. I don't have to get in my car and drive or take a bus into, you know, Code Platoon's actual class. So a lot of advantages to being a remote student. So least of my worries now is, am I going to get the same education? Because I think I may even get a better education because I'm in a more relaxed environment, my home. That's just a personal thing that I think that I, uh, I'm i feeling right now. We'll see as the weeks progress. Uh, but now I want to talk about uh, the topics that we covered this week. So uh, first thing was getting your computer set up for the course. This is done using breakout rooms in Zoom. They had a breakout room for Mac, Linux, and Windows-based computers. Uh, once inside the room, they made sure that everybody was ready and their computers were set up correctly. Um, another thing we talked about was exploring your IDE. IDE. There are many different IDEs out there. Um, however, for this class, or for my class at least, we're using VS Code. We went over a few extensions that might make it easier, easier for us to build applications um, uh, such as Beautify, VS Code Icons, and uh, Live Server. That's just to name a few. Um, there are a few others that we talked about. Um, and then not to mention, you know, where to kind of go to, to see uh, the different extensions that are out there and one that may better suit you. So um, we also talked about navigating 
uh, your computers using uh, the command line interface or CLI, AKA shell, terminal, console, or command prompt. We went over the basic commands to run programs, manage computer files, and interact with the computer. Uh, how, we went over how to create and manage Git report, repositories using the command line. We talked about the difference between Git and GitHub. So Git is a way to communicate with GitHub and GitHub is just a, the storage place for all those repositories. Um, how to fork a repository, how to clone it, and then how to push those files back up to the main repository once you're done editing them. Before starting Code Platoon, we had a lot of pre-work, which was, in my experience, mostly in JavaScript. And I really think uh, that that prepared me for the course um, because day two was intro to JavaScript. And you know, a lot of the things that we visited were was basically everything that I covered during that, that pre-work items that I had to complete. Um, they had a lecture in the morning um, you know, for me, it's 630 because I'm in Arizona. So two hours behind uh, Chicago where Code Platoon is located. So at 630 to, you know, lunchtime, um, we were doing our morning lecture. Um, and the way that GitHub is set up and how they have their repository, they have a curriculum. So you know exactly what you're you're working on that day. Um, and then, so for day one, we, we, we focused it on all that, um, setting up day two was intro to JavaScript. And then, um, in the afternoon, we worked on JavaScript algorithms. And again, we had breakout rooms where, you know, they had one breakout room for each of the algorithms that we had to work on that day. And, um, again, if we were having issues, we can ping one of the TAs or one of the instructors and in one of those breakout rooms. Um, and just kind of ask as many questions as we, as we need to. The good thing about the TAs and the instructors when you're working on these algorithms during this first week is they're not going to give you the answer, um, which in my opinion is, it sucks, but at the same time, um, you know, they're not just going to hand it to you. They want you to do some, some digging. Um, if, if I had a few TAs that would look at my code and if I was, if I was really close, they may say, hey, look at this area online, whatever, to say, um, what is that line doing? And that may be your issue. You know, so um, it was, it was, I thought, structured great. Um, and then uh, the next day on day three was intro to Python. And it was the same uh, morning lecture. And then the same algorithms that we worked on in day two, we just now... Uh, completed those algorithms in Python. Uh, day four was Python list methods and modules. Um, we also had a guest speaker who came in and talked about the mentor program. So Code Platoon has a mentor program where um, they're going to they're going to assign you a mentor, and that mentor, you know, it, you can you can decide on how often you want to meet with that person, whether that person is, is going to meet you. Um, on Zoom, Slack, or in person, and then kind of how much you want to you want to interact with that person. That person, you know, is just used to uh, to talk, to have any, any questions you may have about the industry, or just um, you know their their journey and how they got to where they're at. Um, day five was review of all the material we covered during the week. Um, a lot of questions came out of that review. Um, a lot of best practices going forward for the our cohort. Um, we assigned a, a class president and social chair. Um, we also had a chance to talk with a few of the previous cohort students um, with kind of a check in on how they've been since graduating the course. And um, the the few that we talked to, um, each one of them felt very good about their experience at Code Platoon. Um, I know going into mine, I got to view a lot of their their final um, final assignments or final programs that they worked on as a group and individual through LinkedIn. They had videos, and I was very impressed with what they did and what they were able to achieve in the time that they were at Code Platoon. So it was really good experience. Um, 
and getting to, to hear from each one of them and a lot of the questions that each one of the students asked. Um, and then uh, to finish out the, the day, you know, we worked on um, the algorithms for that or the assignments for that day, which was, you know, um, five different algorithms that, you know, would give us some time during the weekend to work on in JavaScript and in Python. And then kind of the expectation for the weekend, you know, um, we had a long week. It was a lot of hours for me personally, um, not just during class, but after. And one of the things that they talked about was, you know, getting some rest and not coming into week two burned out. And um, and I can see how if you don't take a rest and you don't get up and walk away from your computer for a little bit and take a break, um, be yourself, be a human being again, and not just somebody that interacts with a computer all day, um, really sets you up for the next week and, and gets, you, gets you ready and motivated again just as much as you were during that week one right before you started. Um, so I'm super excited um, to get started in a week two. I uh, just wanted to to kind of check in and let you know how I was doing. And uh, you can expect this from me each, each week thereafter until I graduate. And uh, thank you.